Who even likes cauliflower? What's it good for? Well, stick around and I'll show you how to turn it into a delicious main course pasta dish. This video is part of my No Nuts November series where I'm trying to raise awareness about nut allergies, something that affects me personally. Thankfully, they aren't life-threatening. I don't go into anaphylactic shock, my throat doesn't constrict, but nut allergies are scary and I've had to cut nuts out of my diet. I hope you try some of these recipes and I hope you start considering how nut allergies can affect people in and around your communities, maybe even people that you know and love. It's actually really surprising how many people don't really give it thought in restaurant settings. There are so many restaurants that have desserts or even main courses that have nuts in them. That really limits options for a number of diners, myself included. All right, thank you for tuning in to my No Nuts November series. Let's get back to the recipe. The key to making good cauliflower is to roast it. Roasting cauliflower tenderizes it. It makes it soft and chewy. It's no longer crunchy. It, it has a really nice texture once it's been cooked properly. Roasting it at a high heat also gives it some really nice browning and brings out interesting nutty flavors that you don't get otherwise. Our application today is in a pasta dish. We're going to be making penne pasta that is going to be served with the roasted cauliflower and a lemony garlic confit sauce. Years ago, I found a recipe online for this roasted cauliflower dish and it sounded really good, except it was roasted cauliflower and walnuts. So I had to modify it and figure out a way to substitute the walnuts. Turned out to be pretty easy. Really all I had to do was substitute sunflower seeds. They're still going to give me an interesting textural crunch while providing a nutty flavor. It's not exactly the same flavor, but it's in the wheelhouse and I think it's a pretty good approximation. Although I can't say because I've never had the original. It's a really warm, filling, hearty wintertime meal without being super heavy and filling. The sauce is just absolutely delicious. The cauliflower itself is tender and packed full of flavor, and who doesn't love some pasta? But you don't have to take my word for it. Try it for yourself and find out. To make this dish, you'll need cauliflower, olive oil, kosher salt, black pepper, sugar, penne, garlic confit, crushed red pepper, lemon, parmesan, and sunflower seeds. All right, cauliflower, it's hardly anybody's favorite vegetable. You'd have to pull a lot of people before they said cauliflower was their favorite, but it can be delicious, and here's how you do it. To start, preheat your oven to 500 degrees with a rack at the middle loaded with your baking sheet. We're going to let that come up to temperature with the baking sheet in there. You'll see why. While the oven comes up to temp, we're going to get to work on the rest of the recipe. Set a pot of salted water to boil on the stove. We're going to need that to cook the pasta, and it takes a while to preheat. Next, let's work on prepping your cauliflower. You want to remove all the hard green leafy bits so that you can get to the cauliflower itself, the white part that is the flesh of the cauliflower. For that, you just need a utility knife. So. Just gently get your knife in there and sort of spin it around. That will trim off the base so that it is flush with the bottom of the head of cauliflower. Then just use your knife to trim away as much of the green leaf as you can. Don't worry about getting all of it because before you start cutting too deep in, go ahead and split the head in half and then a quarter. This will give you easier access to the end pieces here. Okay, once you have your quarters all trimmed up, finish slicing the cauliflower into eighths. Don't worry about it. If it sort of falls apart, that's fine. Now get your biggest bowl, add the cauliflower, it's fine if you end up with some florets like this, but little parts like this, you really do need to toss because those are just going to burn. We're going to be roasting this at an incredibly high heat. Now to finish prepping the cauliflower, go ahead and drizzle it with 30 millimeters of your olive oil. What I like to do is actually use some of the oil from my garlic confit that I made. Great way to just use up that oil and get a bit more flavor into this dish. Sprinkle the salt, pepper, and sugar over the cauliflower. 
and toss everything around. Now time to juice your lemon. You're gonna want between two and three tablespoons. That's 30 to 45 millimeters, one to one and a half ounces. We don't need any peel for this recipe. Now in a small to medium bowl, go ahead and start mashing your garlic confit. Just use a fork. At a certain point, once the garlic is broken up, switch over to a spatula and continue mashing it to really smooth it out. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, but smoother is better. At this point, add your red pepper flakes. And we're going to start with 30 mils, that's one ounce, of the lemon juice. This is going to form the base of the sauce for our cauliflower and pasta. And lastly, whisk in the remaining oil. You want to do this slowly so that it will emulsify into the garlic paste and start to form a sauce. The oven is up to temp, which means that our baking sheet is going to be blazing hot. Time to dump our seasoned cauliflower on there and roast it for about 20 to 25 minutes until it is deeply golden brown. Be careful, that pan is going to be extremely hot. Much as you can, arrange it so it is a cut side down. Now, back in the oven. The process of toasting seeds, nuts, or even spices is pretty straightforward. Get yourself a saucepan that seems a little too deep or a little too large for what you're cooking. Drop them in, put them over a medium flame, and just keep swirling them. Once the pasta is done, you're going to want to work pretty quickly. You want to carry over the heat that's residual in the pot in order to melt the cheese and blend it with the sauce. You'll see how it all plays out. Here we go. Grab a cup of water out of the boiling pot before you drain it. Now drain the pasta. And get it back in the pot. Mix in about half the cheese, all of your garlic paste that's going to form the base of the sauce, about a quarter cup of the water that you pulled out. That's 60 mils. Be sure to stir pretty vigorously. You want everything to come together. If you've got stringy bits of cheese like that, add a bit more water. The water does a few things. So it's not just liquid. It's also going to have some residual starch from the pasta, as well as the salt that we had in the pasta water. And then working quickly, chop up your cauliflower into bite-sized pieces. When I was a kid, I never would have believed that cauliflower would taste good. Turns out you just gotta roast it, get it nice and browned, release all those flavors. Mm. And stir in the cauliflower. And there you are. Really hearty, delicious cauliflower pasta for four. 
Dish up the pasta. Garnish with the remaining cheese. And the toasted seeds. To make this a complete meal, I would add probably a side salad up front, just a nice green vegetable salad with a light vinaigrette, and then, you know, something nice and simple for dessert. I have some of my lemon basil ricotta gelato in the freezer, so I'm going to be dishing that up for dessert tonight. Let's do a little taste test. That rich, nutty sweetness of the confit garlic right up front. It's cheesy and delicious. I mean, it is basically a fancy macaroni and cheese. I really like when I get one of the seeds. They're nice and crunchy. Yeah. And yes, I know adding cheese to a vegetable is basically cheating. The French have been doing it for centuries. This penne with roasted cauliflower and confit garlic is phenomenal. Give it a shot. That's it for me this week. I'm PK Sullivan. This is Breakfast for Pancakes, and I'll see you next time.